Kyle Rudolph here with us, the Vikings outstanding tight end. By the way, if you're watching on ESPN2 and you look at him, he is a Viking. I mean, just look at him. He I mean, really where, is. Where else could you yeah, play? Yeah. I mean, you, you look like you just came over on the boat and you're conquering lands. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really <laughs> impressive. Um, obviously, you guys fell one game short of where you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. You guys had a, a chance to be the first team ever to have a Super Bowl played in your home stadium. Um, how long did it take you guys to get past the idea that, ah, we missed it by that much? Well, I was over it until you just brought it up. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you don't like me. I, I'm, just, I'm just asking the tough no. questions. And honestly, I, I was fortunate enough this past week to go down to Orlando and, and participate in the Pro Bowl festivities and, and take my family down there and kind of get away immediately following the game in Philly. And, you know, that kind of gave me the opportunity to relax a little bit, forget about it. Uh, it almost seemed like that Philly game was a month and a half ago. Uh, and then I landed at MSP on Monday, coming back in town, and you know you see all the Super Bowl Fifty Two gear everywhere, and uh, you go downtown, see no way Super Bowl it. live, no and it way was just it. like ripping a scab clean off uh, and, and putting some salt in the wound. But um, throughout this week, you know you you see the great job that our city and state have done to put on the Super Bowl, and uh, you kind of dive into the Super Bowl festivities, and you know for me this is my eighth Super Bowl that I've gone to and, and done stuff like this, so it it turns into just another Super Bowl, and you know it, it kind of helps me forget that you know two weeks ago we were playing to be in this game and we were that close. So um, yeah, like I said, the the busier I can stay, the less I I try to remember. I'm a really jerk, but big jerk. I'm sorry. You really are. I, <laughs> I mean, we, we I'm, I'm going to put myself in timeout. Mike, ask me the, the question. The toughest part is that, that after it's all said and done, you, it has to be, right, as you said, right in your face because it, it, it's right here where, I, where you're hanging yeah, out. Yeah, I said if, if the Super Bowl was anywhere but yeah. here, and, you know, I was just coming back home and then going to the Super Bowl, um, it would have been easier to get over, obviously, coming home and having everything here. Uh, it's awesome for the state of Minnesota and the city of Minneapolis to have it. Yep. Just makes it a little harder for us. And, and then the high and low, the high of you, you were nice enough to come on after the game, the, the, the heaven play, you know, against New Orleans, and then you go to the low against Philadelphia in that game. And as I said, if you play long enough, you're in a game like that where mm -hmm. you know – you know that's not the difference of the two teams, of right. Philadelphia, Minnesota. But there you are. We had Adam Thielen we had on early in the week, and I yep. asked him the same thing. At, at what point on the sideline are you just kind of like, wow, I, I, I can't even believe this is happening right now and this shouldn't be happening. Well, the thing, you know, you look at the way the game played out, and, you know, for us – we had an opportunity uh, down 14-7. to seven, uh, We get a strip sack turnover. And honestly, if the ball gets off, uh, and I'm catching my second touchdown and the game's tied 14-14. And uh, we're really liking where we're at at that point in the game. And then the next time that us as an offense actually possessed the ball and drove down the field, it was 31-7. to seven. Yeah, So we crazy. went from being 14-14 to 14 to – you know, they go down and score, they make it 21-7, then they get the field goal right before half, 24, get the ball to start the second half, and they score a touchdown. We go out there, and you look at the scoreboard, and you're like, when did this happen? It right. was, you know, we're just one play away from being 14-14, yeah. all tied. And, you know, that's how the game goes. You know, if you turn the ball over five times like we did, um, you know, everything they did on offense, they, they hit. They hit their shots. I mean, you know, Nick made a couple unbelievable throws down the field, and, uh, you know, that's a game can get sideways like that. Well, it certainly did. I mean – that's why situational football is so is so important and so impactful, you know, because suddenly, like you said, before we even had a chance to get on the field, mm -hmm. it's like we're pretty much out of this right. game. Kyle Rudolph here with us, the Vikings tight end. So there are a lot of concerns and question marks now for the Vikings going forward in a good way mm -hmm. because the defense is solid. It looks like you're going to have the running game with Latavius Murray and we'll get Dalvin Cook back. But you have a very unique situation in Minnesota right yeah. now where all three of the quarterbacks that played the majority of the games for you are on expiring contracts. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sam Bradford came in and played great, and then the, there were the concerns with his knee. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater coming back, which was a great story to see how emotional he was from that horrible injury uh, suffered in, before practice and a practice before the games even started in 2016. And then Case Keenum comes out of nowhere and plays like an NFL MVP on the short list for that, the way he played. But all three are on expiring contracts. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen with the guys that are throwing you the football? Well, I think you look at the way our team is built, and you mentioned the great defense. Uh, you know, we, we revamped the offensive line last year and brought in a lot of guys that, that did a great that job unit. with that. And, that they, you know, they're a big reason for our success on offense. And then, you know, look at our skill positions. You guys mentioned Adam Thielen, obviously Stephon Diggs. Um, you know, we have tight ends that can make plays, great runners. Uh, so that quarterback position is one to where, you know, we, we have guys that can be successful and uh, our front office will do a great job and, and decide, you know, which one of those makes the most sense moving forward. And, you know, 
we're not like most teams, you know, we're built around the quarterback, you know, to whereas with us, you know, we have pieces in place to lay a foundation that allow us to be good for a long time. And, you know, our, our front office will do a great job in, in deciding, you know, who makes the most sense moving forward. Kyle Rudolph joining us uh, again in the red zone for Kyle this season. He caught 16 of his 18 red zone targets over the last two years, caught 28 red zone passes that's tied for most in the league so let's let's look at the eagles who have pretty good tight end mm-hmm. of their own yeah, in, in zach Ertz. uh but from a defensive side because you you know as you said w- w- would have had your second touchdown in that game we obviously know the patriots have a great uh, tight end mm-hmm. and rob gronkowski so talk about he's that he's not a tight end he's a dancing bear yeah talk about that eagle defense yeah. from the word i hear about them is they frustrate you at mm-hmm. times the way they play so give us a scouting report of what new england is going to be facing well they play with great teams speed uh, you know on all three levels you know they, they got guys that can run and you know for them it all starts up front you know they've got a great pass rush and you know you look at the times Tom has struggled in Super Bowls and it's, it's been from a great pass rush and and specifically a great interior right. rush you know if you get ends that get up the field and that's great Tom will move around and, and he'll dice you up but you know Philly has a guy in Fletcher Cox who can really put pressure directly in Absolutely. your face and uh, you know we saw it firsthand two weeks ago. And then, you know, you look at the guys on the back end. Malcolm obviously will play a, a huge role in, in, in guarding Gronk most of the game, in my opinion. And it'll, that'll be a fun matchup. You know, me as a tight end, obviously, just going against him two weeks ago to, to watch this in the Super Bowl will be fun. Kyle Rudolph here with us. You know, one thing that we've seen on that Eagles defense, as great as they played, and they had that seven-man rotation on the defensive line, which is critical if you huge. want to try and generate yep. pressure for 60 minutes. Uh, that, that secondary is susceptible sometimes to the double moves, especially when they're playing playing in man. Was that something you guys noticed on film, and how do you think the Patriots might try and attack that part of the secondary? Well, you know, I, I go back to the front, and, you know, it's it's hard to run double moves when you have a pass rush that can that can get home as, as well as they can. And, you know, that, that's that's any defense. You know, you, you think back to all the great Seahawks defenses that, that played, and, you know, I remember we went to Seattle a few years ago, and it was like, you know, if we can block them long enough, you know, yeah. these plays would be great. And, you know, you, you have to get throughout the course of a game. And, you know, obviously, you you know, it would be great if we could just dial up all these double moves and, you know, they would work. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, you have to block those guys long enough to get the double move off. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why that defense is in the one of the top in our leagues. You know, they, they go out there and they get after the quarterback. And, you know, it makes it so those guys can jump balls in the secondary right. they know the ball has to come out or else that front's going to get home how, how do you you specifically and maybe your teammates as well view the Super Bowl now are you one of those that if we lost then we want to lose to the Super Bowl champ mm-hmm. so you would want Philadelphia to win or do you not want the conference winning how, how does how, how does that go for you or B or C you could care less yeah I, I could care less yeah. you know, <laughs> at this point I want to make it as much like a fan watching the game you know I want to try to remove myself and, and make it seem like I had nothing to do with what happened two weeks ago in terms of you know at this point the the, the more I can remove myself to Forgetting about that, yeah, we just lost to those guys two weeks ago and, and had a chance to be playing in the game, the better. Go look and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. We're going we're gonna to get a prediction for you on the Super Bowl in a minute, but before we do that, I want to talk about one thing that you won't have going forward next year uh, here in Minnesota, and that's your offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. Pat Shermer. He's done a great job with all the pieces that you talked about. He's now the head coach of the New York Giants. What do you think Giants fans can expect out of Pat Shermer in 2018 and beyond? Uh, they're getting, you know, obviously a great football coach and a great offensive mind, and, you know, he was awesome for us in terms of, you know, you meant, I mentioned all those pieces earlier, and you talked about them, and you know, he got the most out of each and every one of those guys. And, you know, obviously he's going to a place where um, they have a great quarterback. They have some elite weapons at wide receiver. Um, you know, he'll get the most out of those guys. And, you know, I, I told him that I'm excited for him. Obviously we're going to miss him a ton. You know, he, I worked personally with him in the tight end room you know, a year ago before he took over as our OC. So got to know him really, really well. And, uh, we're ex- excited for him, and you know that's part of having success in this league. You know when you're good, uh, your coaches are going to get promotions. Kai Rudolph again here from the Minnesota Vikings, their tight end. And as you no- notice, if you listen and watch the show all week, we see a lot of players come in and talk about the game and give their time. But then they have things that they want to talk about. Just so you know, Kyle, Kyle just wanted to come in and, and just kind of, kind of hang out. So I mean, that's the kind of guy Kyle is. So I'm bringing this up to you. I know you have an event today, and I know you and your wife Jordan have done a ton uh, in the area, especially. Mm-hmm. At 
the Children's Hospital yes. and what you've done there with the, I believe the end zone mm-hmm, is correct. called there. So, so talk about uh, talk about what's going on today and what you've done at the hospital. Yeah, today at the hospital we're going to do a pretty cool event in the afternoon, and uh, you know Mikey's MC and yeah. he's going to head it up down there, and uh, we're having a press conference, um, but it's not any normal Super Bowl press conference. You know, the local media they national media they don't get to ask any questions uh the questions will come from patients and and families in the hospital and uh it'll be a lot of fun we'll have some great great panelists up there um uh myself uh adam thielen um apparently brett Favre's coming so hey wow i'm extremely excited about that you know as a kid obviously i grew up watching watching brett play and i won't tell him that don't say that we old people don't like when you hear i watched you when i was in grade school you know you don't like that i'm pretty sure his daughter is is around my age so you know i won't bring that up to him that we were a year away from playing (laughs) together and he has kids my age so uh i'm looking forward to to getting down there and it'll be a ton of fun and it's an opportunity for those kids to partake in in super bowl festivities and you know, for an afternoon, we can kind of take their mind off of why they're uh, It's great what you and, and your wife, Jordan, have been doing, uh, have been doing here. And good, the Twins doing well. Thank you. They're good? great. Absolutely. Yeah, good. Good. That's big. awesome, Kyle. Yeah. Great stuff. Okay, before we let you go, we got to find out who you like, Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, I'm taking the Patriots. You know, I as long as the Giants aren't on the other side, I, I, they seem to do pretty well. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think the Patriots won't do the things that we did that cost us the game in Philly. Uh, you know, Tom will take care of the ball. Uh, they'll do enough on defense to take away the things that they do well, and uh, I look for the Patriots to win. Well, I tell you, you're right. If you're going to beat the Patriots, you have to beat them. They're yeah, not going to beat themselves. Yep, I can exactly. promise you that. Kyle Rudolph, Thanks, ladies Kyle. and Thank gentlemen, one of the best. Thanks, and Thanks, an actual Viking. Thank you. Look at him. He's an actual <laughs> Viking. <laughs>